let's talk about combination circuits. Pretty much everything we deal with these days really is a combination circuit. Not just series, not just parallel, but the two of them blend it somehow. Let's first of all look at car headlights. Do you think your car headlights are wired in series or parallel? And why do you think one or the other? Okay, think about this. Have you ever had a light bulb? Have you ever hit something or one of your headlights went out? Did the other bulb change in brightness? Hopefully, the answer is no. If they were wired in series and one went out, they would both go out. All right. Um, so when one goes out, the other headlight stays on until you know they have to be in parallel. Now, when voltage drops, bulbs do not shine as brightly. When the voltage stays the same, then the, the shine is the same. So that's how you tell if um, voltage has changed by the brightness of the, sh of the um, bulbs. Now, you're going to do a lab where you're going to observe the brightness of the bulbs. When the brightness does not change, then the voltage is the same. When the brightness increases, the voltage increases. When the, when the brightness decreases, then, of course, the voltage decreases. Now, remember, series and parallel, current is the same in each resistor for series. The potential difference, however, changes, and the total potential difference is the sum of the potential differences. And the equivalent resistance, R1, is equal to the sum of the resistors. While in parallel, the current, the, to the, the battery current is the sum of the currents through all of the resistors, while the voltages stay the same. And the, um, oh, I forgot I went over here. Sorry about that. And the equivalent resistance is a reciprocal sum of the resistance. So let's just mark what is the same. Okay. In series, current's the same. In parallel, voltage is the same. Now, let's look at a typical household circuit. These are all at the same voltage. This is 120 coming out of your wall. And we have a, a closed switch or a fuse here, which is um, very important. The coffee maker is, in this example, is only 10 ohms. The microwave is 8 ohms. And the toaster is 16.9 ohms. This is an example of parallel. Now, clearly, if the toaster is not on, you still want to be able to use your microwave. And you certainly have to be able to use that coffee maker first thing in the morning. So let's talk about the fuse. Fuses are used, fuses and circuit breakers are used to prevent extra current. So you have to put a fuse or a circuit break in, in a circuit in series with the outlet. Now, a fuse is a metallic strip that melts if the current's too high, and this can needs to be replaced. This is a hassle. This is a royal pain. Um, when I was a child, this is how my, our house was. And if you ran out of fuses, then your, your lights blew, then you were kind of stuck in the dark. But these days, we have circuit breakers, which is just a switch. So that if the current gets too high, the switch gets flipped, and the overload is removed. And basically, all you have to do is go back into your garage. At least that's where my circuit breaker, my uh, switch box is, and flip the switch again. Of course, this happens in my house. Sometimes when we get too many computers and electronics going, so you have to be careful about things like that. Now, the fuse and the circuit breaker, depending on which one you have, must be in series. So excessive current doesn't reach the appliance. Imagine you're making a piece of toast and suddenly get a whole bunch more current. Your toast will go from bread to burned far too quickly. Um, make sure you always use the right fuse or circuit breaker. And, um, you know, you know, when, when I was growing up, the fuses were these nice little round things. And one, they were about the size of a penny. And some people would get too lazy to replace the fuse so they'd use a penny. But that was never good. That was a really good way to start a fire. And remember that the fuses and circuit breakers um, are rated based on the maximum total current going in. All right. Now, let's talk about combinations. 
what are we going to do when we see something like this? Okay, don't cry. Just don't. You can take a deep breath, and you're going to simplify this. All right? First, look to see if anything is in series. Series is so much easier to deal with than anything else. So look at this. You see from here through here, there is one current. So why don't we just um, recognize that these three are in series and find the equivalent resistance. Now I'm going to label these R, 2, 3, 4, because this is resistor 2, resistor 3, and resistor 4. Uh, let's convert these. This is 47, 0, 0 ohms. You can't add ohms and kiloohms, so we have to get everything to ohms. And this is 1, 5, 0, 0 ohms. So the equivalent resistance for 2, 3, 4 is 680 plus 4, 7, 0, 0 plus 1, 5, 0, 0. So let's see, when I add 680 plus 4, 7, 0, 0 plus 1, 5, 0, 0, I get 6,000. 880 ohms. All right, so as far as the battery is concerned, these three are in series. So let me show you how I'm going to draw this. This is still R1. And R1, by the way, is 1,000 ohms. Okay, now when I rip this out, I'm going to change the color here. Let me go to a highlighter. Do you see, I'm just going to rip this whole thing out right here, and I'm going to replace it. Do you see when I replace it, I'm going to replace it with 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, which is going to be in parallel. So, I have this mess. The first thing I'm going to do is look to see if anything is in series. And if so, I'm going to pull those out and replace them with one resistor. Now, I've replaced 2, 3, 4 with, um, or resistors 2, 3, and 4 with the equivalent resistance, and I see this is now a parallel circuit. Oh, that's wonderful, because now I can find the equivalent resistance of these two, because I know 1 over R equivalent, I could do 1, 2, 3, 4, but that's too much writing for me, I'm too lazy, is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, 3, 4. So this is 1 divided by 1,000 plus 1 over 6, 8, 8, 0, now, what kind of work are you going to do to get this? Um, do whatever you need to do, okay? I tend to do 1,000, 1 over, plus 6, 8, 8, 0, 1 over, equals, and then invert that. So I get our equivalent is 8, 7, 3, point, um, 1 ohm. So basically now I can replace this with one resistor. All right, so this is much easier to deal with. Now, once I get here uh, and I have uh, completed my equivalent resistance, now I can find my total current. All right, so I know. V equals IR. So I'm going to have one current coming out of here and one current going through R equivalent. So the current is going to be V divided by R. So it's going to be 12 volts divided by 873.1 ohms. So let me see what that is. 12 divided by 873 gives me, I'm going to have a total current of 0 0.0137 uh, 4 amps. This is the total current coming out. Now, I want you to pay attention. I'm going to work backwards. I'm going to change my pin color to red, and I'm actually going to go backwards. This is my total current. is 0 0.0.1374 amps. Now, let me go back. Here, I know the current coming out of here is 0 0.01374 amps. And I know part of it's going to go down here and part of it's going to go down here. So let's call this one at I1 and this one's I2. So let's figure out what I1 is. I know they both, R1 and R234, have 
a potential difference of 12 volts. So I know V equals IR. So I know I1 is going to be V divided by R1. So V is 12 volt divided by 100, or excuse me, 1,000, all right, which is 0 0.012 amps. And I've already done this, so I'm not going to rewrite this every time. So R I2 is V divided by that resistor, which is R234 which is 12 divided by 6880, which is 12 divided by 6880, and I get 0.00174 amps. Now, let's add these two up. 0.012 plus 0 0.00174, and I get a current of, let's see, I got 0 0.01374 amps. And lo and behold, yay, that is the current I started with. That tells me I did this correctly. So I have the current going through um, this entire section. So I'm going to go back again to this. So I know the current going through here. This is I2 is 0 0.0071174. Sorry about that. 174. All right, so I2 is 0 0.00174 amps. So I can find the voltage drop across each one of these resistors. So the voltage across resistor 2 is the current through 2 times R2. So it's 0 0.00174 times 680. 0 0.00174 times 680 is 1.1832 volts. Now I'm going to change ink color for these. Voltage across 3 is current 2, because that's the current going through it times R3, so it's 0 0.00174, um, that's my current, times 4700, let me put that in the calculator, 0 0.00174 times 4700, and I get a voltage of 8.176 volts. Now let's find the voltage across um, the 1.5, I'm going to have to come over here and squish a little bit. Voltage across 4 is I2R4. So this is 0 0.00174 times 1500. So 0 0.00174 times 1500 is 2.61. Now, what do my voltages add up to? Let's see if we can find out if we did this correctly. There's no need to ever get these wrong. So 2.61 plus 8.176 plus 1.1832. Let's see what we get. We get 1.1832. I'm getting... All right, with all my rounding, 11.9692 volts. Let me round that because I do have round off error in here, and I get 12 volts. Lo and behold, I did this correctly. I'm excited. So basically, I've taken this messy circuit, and I have totally analyzed it. Just be careful.